In this video, we're going to discuss what an index is and then how to create one in SDA using an example based on people's attitudes about abortion. In, the so in sociological research in the quantitative world, we tend to think of things, uh, we often create indices or scales, and people use these terms interchangeably. I'll almost guarantee that by the end of this video, I'll have used the word scale. But really, what we're going to talk about here and the thing we're going to create is an index, not a scale. Here's one of the distinguishing characteristics of an index. Typically, they're additive, meaning we take several variables and add their values together. Scales might be um, done a little bit differently by weighting the different values, or they, they kind of measure a sense of intensity. What they share in common is that they're both composite measures. So we're going to create a single variable a new variable that didn't exist before based on the values of some other set of variables, in this case six other variables. And we're going to add them to together to make an additive or cumulative index. In the general social survey, if you go over to the code book on the left hand side and find, uh, you know, scroll down until you find the uh, box labeled controversial social issues and click on the plus sign and then go to the section labeled abortion, you can, you can see that the GSS has asked many questions over the years on people's attitudes about abortion. Six of the questions have shown up regularly since 1972. The mnemonics all begin with AB for abortion and then they're followed up by some descriptive um, text indicating what the variable is about. For example, AB health, AB rape, AB defect, and so forth. The general social survey question asked respondents, please tell me whether or not you think it should be possible for a pregnant woman to obtain a legal abortion if, for example, the woman's own health is seriously endangered by the pregnancy. That's the AB health question. Respondents could say yes, they believe a woman should have a legal abortion, and then they were given the value of one. Or they could say no, that they don't think that a woman should have uh, access to a legal abortion in this circumstance, and then they were coded two. You can read through these questions and see that they have different kinds of circumstances. And in a way, there's almost different, we could think of these as sub-indices, because the first three questions tend to be what researchers call hard questions, and the last three are the soft questions. Soft questions basically imply that you know, the, a, a woman became pregnant and she has choices to make, where in the first three questions, sort of the pregnancy was thrust upon her, or she's confronting that their child might have a birth defect and the, and the implications of that. So some people might actually create three indices here, a hard index based on the first three questions, a soft index based on the second three questions, and a total index based on all six. I want my index to go, you know, my index will have values attached to it, and there'll be small values and large values. I'd like the small values to mean uh, to be representative of people who are not favorable about abortion and my larger values to be representative of people who believe in abortion in these circumstances. If I simply add these variables together and you can look at the statement down below, it's kind of a mathematical representation. It says abortion is equal to AB health plus AB rate plus AB defect and so forth. If I simply add these values up, I'll get a scale that ranges from 6 to 12. 6 meaning people who are most favorable about abortion, and 12 meaning least favorable. So there's two issues with this scale. Uh, number one, it goes from 6 to 12, and number two, it's reversed of what I really want. But let's look at some hypothetical data to see if we can understand what's going on. Here are four people who responded to this scale in different ways. Person number one, their scale score is six. That is, this is a person who, in assessing each of these six circumstances, believed that a woman in each case should be allowed to have a legal abortion, and they were coded one each time. And if I simply add up all their ones, I get a value of six. So this is a person who is very favorable about abortion for these circumstances. Person number two, is a different person. They believe that in, in assessing each of these six circumstances that a woman should never be allowed to have a legal abortion. That is, they responded no each time to each circumstance and were coded two. 
if I add up their values, I get 12. So 6 and 12 represent our extreme values. The scale can be no less than 6, no more than 12. And in this case, you know, you can see that the 6 means that's somebody who's pro-abortion, or sorry, pro-choice, and the 12 means somebody who's anti-abortion. Hypothetical person number three and hypo hypothetical person number four had mixed views on this, sometimes saying yes, legal abortion, and sometimes no, and so they fall somewhere in the middle of that 6 to 12 range. At the end of the day, the two things I don't like about this particular index is it doesn't start at 0 or 1. It kind of starts at 6, which is, doesn't really make sense to me. And the low values represent the things that I'd like to be coded higher. I'm really trying to make an index of people and pro-choice attitudes, not anti-abortion attitudes. So there's a solution to this. Look at this new mathematical representation. It's very similar to the one from the slide before. In other words, we're going to take the values of each of these individual variables and add them up. But we're going to take the number 12 and subtract from 12 the scale value or the index value of each person. Now, here's how this works. Let's just take a look at person number 2. We know that person number 2 responded no to every question and on the first scale had a value of 12, which meant that they were the most anti-abortion that you could be based on these variables. If I take 12 minus the sum of all their scores, that is 12 minus 12, their new index score is 0. So they went from 12 to 0. Now look at person number 1. This person, again, was the person who, uh, in assessing these circumstances, felt that a woman should always be allowed to have a legal abortion. They were coded yes for each variable. And the sum of all those yeses or ones was 6. 12 minus 6 is 6. So their score stays the same, but it's no longer the lowest score, it's now the highest. We've, in essence, done two things. We've swapped the low score for the high score, and we've set, the, set it so that this scale now ranges from 0 to 6, not from 6 to 12. And, of course, person number 3 and person number 4 are affected in exactly the same way. That is, their scores are reversed so that, that their final score, the 3 and the 4 they get, is on, a, is on an index of 0 to 6, but also represents the degree of pro-choice that those people are. We're going to move over to SDA now and see how to construct this particular variable. Okay, here we are over in SDA. So I've gone to their website and loaded the default page. What we're going to do is create a new variable based on those variables that we saw uh, in the slides before. Now I'm just going to go up here into the row and I'm going to type in A B H L T H AB health. I just am curious what the variable looks like. I've already done this work but I want to make certain that I'm not going to make any mistakes. I'm going to double check and again we can see here that people who responded yes to this question uh, that a woman should be allowed to have a legal abortion if her health is seriously endangered were coded as one and people who didn't believe this to be true were coded two. Shut this window and we'll come back and start talking about how to construct our scale. So we need to compute a new variable and I'm going to do that by going to this create variables drop down menu and you see my options are to recode an existing variable, compute a new variable, or list delay, delete created variables. I'm going to call this variable abortion and I want to see if that variable already exists. So I'm going to click on that and it takes me to this window which shows me all the variables that people, you know, researchers and students have created that are saved by um, the SDA program for at least a little while so you can come back, you know, in a day or two and reuse your variables without having to recreate them. And I'm going to look down this list of variables. So you can see I'm looking down here in the column labeled name and I'm not seeing anything called abortion. And I'm doing this because I don't want to call my variable the same thing as a variable that already exists because when I created my variable it would destroy or write over the old variable that somebody else created. So I'm just trying to be a little polite here and not ruin somebody else's work. So I'm okay. I, that name's available. And so we'll come over here to create variables and compute a new variable. 
Now, you can always click on these links in this uh, browser window to look at the help menus, and there's lots of good examples, and if you get stuck, that's a great place to start. In this box where it says expression to define the new variable, we need to put in some kind of statement that says how to add these things together and to make certain that once we add them together we do 12 minus that sum. I've already gone ahead and uh, cop, you know, created this so I just sort of pasted it in there and so now you can see that my statement is that my new variable I'm calling it abortion is equal to 12 minus and then I'm going to group these things in parentheses the values contained in AB health plus AB rape, plus AB defect, plus AB poor, plus AB single, plus AB no more. And that's really it. That's sort of the minimum you need to do, assuming I don't have any errors in my statement here. I can assign a nice little label down here, so I'll call this abortion attitude index. I'm not going to worry about missing value data codes. Uh, SDA is going to handle all that for me. I can come down here and I can add some descriptive text. I'm not going to do that today, but you know this is where I'd want to put in some description of why I'm doing this, maybe put my name on it. I'm not going to use any labels. We just want these things to go from 0 to 6. And then I just click on the Start Computing button, and it creates my variable. It shows me in this new window and it gives me the univariate frequency distribution of this particular measure that I've created. We can see we have 20,693 missing cases and then the distribution of cases in all the categories. One thing that really pops out in just looking at the frequency distribution is that that a lot of people really believe um, in these circumstances, these six circumstances, that a woman should be allowed to have a legal abortion. That is 39 percent, slightly over 39 percent of the people responded affirmatively or positively about a right to a legal abortion in all six of these circumstances. So now that I've created this variable, close this window and go back to uh, the regular SDA, I can come over here to the analysis window and frequencies are cross-tabulation. That's really where we start. That's the default startup. I'm just going to go ahead and look at this variable. You can tell I've already typed it in. I'm going to select it from the drop-down menu. It remembers my uh, selections, my what I've typed in before. And I want to make certain that I don't have any weights selected. Now, I don't want a stacked bar chart here. Instead, I'm going to do a regular bar chart. And we'll go ahead and run the table. So this screen now replicates what we saw after we created the variable. We've got the same uh, coding val coded values and the same uh, percentages and number of cases, which should be there. So in other words, this variable is now available to me in all of SDA for all the analytic routines. And I'll come down here and take a look at my histogram. You know, I don't like all the colors and all that stuff. Um, SDA is not particularly good at graphics, but on the other hand, I do get a pretty good look at what's going on with the data. And again, we can see that large, tall blue column on the right represents people who um, responded yes to every one of those questions that a woman should be allowed to have a legal abortion. And then all the way on the uh, left-hand side, we see, what is it, about 7.5% of the people were were very firmly anti-abortion and then many people fell in the middle. I'd like to look at this over time. I'm just curious if attitudes about abortion have changed over time and so I'm gonna go in this column or in this column slot I'm gonna type in year which is the mnemonic for the year of the survey. And then I don't really want a bar chart that'll be a little messy so I'm gonna take this selection for a line chart and I'm gonna rerun my table. Now this table is pretty much uninterpretable. I'm not gonna to worry too much about it, but you can see that this question that these six questions were asked as early as 1972, the first year of the General Social Survey, and that they've continued it every year that they fielded the survey up here until 2010. So this is a very long series of data so we can track changes in people's attitudes over time. 
here are my six values. Now the line chart I'm going to show you below is a little more informative, but it's a little messy too, and then I'll suggest a way of looking at that a bit differently. Here's our line chart. So what we're getting here is a line for every outcome of this variable. So this top line, the one that's red at the top of the uh, graphic, is the percentage of people who firmly believe that a woman should be allowed to have a legal abortion for all of these reasons. That is, these are, this is the percentage of people who, for each year who responded yes to every one of those questions. Um, that's probably one of the more interesting things. I also might want to contrast them with the people at the other extreme, who are the red line. It's kind of buried in all those lines at the bottom. But where you see about four lines, five lines coming together, it's the red ones with the square dots. There's no way in SDA to easily just select those two uh, sets of series. Um, but I'm going to show you another thing that we could do that might illuminate this a little bit. If I come over to my analysis drop-down menu and I take comparison of means, and then up in here I will put in my abortion uh, variable, the one we've created. This part of SDA will create an average of this, and I want to average this by row, uh, sorry, by year. I'll get the 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 zero to six variable for every year. We'll calculate an average. And I'm going to select no weight. And down here again, I'm going to take line chart. So this will show me the trend in the average of attitudes about abortion based on this index that we've created. I'll run the table. Okay, so now we get a long, long list here. And I'm really interested in the graphic. And here we go. So you can see that the average hovers around 4 for just about every year, but that there's been a slight decline in people's attitudes or, fa or favoring abortion. So that's a quick look at how to create an index. I hope it helps you out. We'll be using this in the lab and creating variables that we can use for analysis for the rest of the course.